2C2 here. I just kind of wanted to talk to you tonight about a, a, a concept uh, you may or may not be familiar with, the concept of companion weapons. Now, to me, a companion weapon setup is usually a, a rifle and a, a, a short gun or pistol, if you will, that shares a commun um, ammunition. Uh, a lot of times, People like this particular setup because, you know, for one, the obvious benefit is you're only carrying one type of ammunition, but you still have the flexibility of using either a rifle, a long arm, or a pistol. In my particular case, of course, uh, you may be familiar with this from uh, some of my other videos. Uh, my custom Spikes Tactical Lower, Daniel Defense Upper, uh, Bravo Company, uh, Bolt Carrier Group, and Charging Handle. But uh, basically your typical AR-15. Uh, of course, we'll do a quick weapon safety check here. Weapon is empty, no ammunition, no magazine. But you have your basic 223-556 rifle. Now, of course, there's a lot of situations where you would want to use this particular weapon. We won't particularly go into those. Uh, I'm sure you're fairly familiar with them. It's a rifle. You understand the concept of what a rifle is, what it's for. Um, there may be some particular situations where you want to use a slightly smaller weapon. And the benefit, and of course, as you can see already here, you know, empty, nothing in. This is a kel PLR-16. Now, this shares um, two things with the AR. Uh, one, obviously, is ammunition. It's also 223-556. Also shares common magazines. You can use the AR-15 magazine in this particular weapon. Of course, I have here the five-round kel but... Uh, you can also use a 30 rounder. So you have that benefit. So you're only carrying one type of ammunition, you're only carrying one type of magazine. Of course here, thank you, Shaun of the Dead, helping me out here. As you can see, also, lock back, AR-15 mag as well. So, you're only carrying one type of ammunition, you're only carrying one magazine, which makes it very easy to swap between weapons. Uh, obviously, this would be a little better suited for close quarters combat. Uh, it's a little lighter, easier to carry. If you're going out and weight is an issue, you may want to take this particular weapon. Uh, benefits, both are using the same rifle round. Uh, even though this is classified as a pistol, and in most states with a concealed carry, you can carry this as a concealed carry pistol, if you can conceal it, which is actually a little easier than you may expect. You're still shooting a rifle round. Now granted, it's not going to be as accurate with a shorter barrel as your rifle, but you still have a little longer range than you would with, say, a companion setup that both used a pistol round, such as a 9mm pistol, Glock, say, and a kel Sub-2000 in a 9mm as well. Those aren't going to reach out quite as far as this particular setup might. Uh, granted, you know, of course, obviously a Glock pistol is going to be a little shorter, but uh, as you can see here, this is my particular setup, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. We're going to talk a little bit more. Sean and is going to show you some stuff with his, and then we'll do a comparison of them side by side. 2C2. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Sean the Dead. Uh, this is part, uh, well, this is the second part of what we're doing here on companion uh, uh, weapons. Uh, as you can see, this is an AK-47 setup. Uh, this is the Draco. Uh, now, first off... Safety check on for you. Off uh, safety. Okay. So just as, a, as a 2C2 was talking about before, you're talking about the same caliber round, which is your 7.62 by 3.9. Um, same mag will fit in each one of the, uh, the firearms. So you can use interchangeable mags, interchangeable ammo for both of the firearms. Um, and if you watch my other, the other video I have out also, about the internals of the two, between the, the difference between the AK-47 uh, rifle versus the pistol, uh, you'll find out that the dust cover, that the uh, spring, and the bolt are interchangeable in the two firearms. So that gives you a little extra added advantage over some of the other platforms that you can do companions on, is because this has some interchangeable parts. Um, the uh, actual um, uh, piston tube is a little longer on the rifle than it is on the pistol, so you're looking at, you know, 
uh, not being able to use utilize that, but you can utilize you know the bolt, the uh, dust cover, and the spray. So you know, all those were identical. So that was kind of nice. Now what I might do at some other uh, some other date, whenever I'm not at the range and I'm out in the country, I may take this short piston and put it in this rifle and just see what happens. And if it, if I see that it doesn't clear when I cycle it, then I might actually try firing it. Uh, but I'll but I'll test all my theories first because that's that could be a potentially dangerous situation. So I want to make sure I I, I fully vet the safety of it before I do such a thing. Um, but a little bit about the AK combo. Um, I happen to have an a, I had to ha happen to have an AK on hand, so um, I was able to pick up a, a AK pistol as a companion piece. Uh, now me and Two C Two were discussing companion guns. We're talking about the Keltec Sub Two Thousand and the Glock. How you can interchange the mags. Of course, you're using a pistol round, so this way you're using a rifle round, so you're going to get a little bit more punch, a little bit more velocity, more knockdown, whatever. Uh, also. We were talking about um, you know old west where people are using 45 long colt in a lever action and 45 long colt in, re in the revolver. A lot of the competition uh, cowboy shooters use like 38 special uh, lever action, 38 special single action revolvers. So they only buy one kind of ammo, they reload the one kind of ammo, and it kind of saves them on that. Um, but the advantages of this is just a slight more just because of the uh, interchangeable uh, part ability. Now, aside from the interchangeable parts, um, it's of all weapon preference. Now, I'm not saying that AK is my preferred weapon platform over an AR. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just simply stating this is a companion setup. Um, now, we're going to get into another video here after we finish this one, and we'll discuss you know preferred weapons, ARs versus AKs and all that, and that's something we'll get into here shortly. So... Why don't I go ahead and cut off, and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and me and 2C2 will have a seat, and we'll discuss um, pros and cons and um, different viewpoints on this potential setup. Hey everybody, 2C2 here again. Hey guys, uh, Sean of the Dead here. Uh, sorry about the uh, camera work thing going on. Um, so here's the uh, final part of the whole... Um, Companion piece, as you can see, uh, we have the uh, pistol companion versions out uh, currently. So, uh, discuss uh, different choices. Yeah, what I want to really kind of talk about here, you know, we're not going to get into it, which is a better, which is not, but basically talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages and differences between the two companion systems that we have shown you here. Of course, the AR-15, 223556 versus the AK-47 7.62. Um, one of the things that really came to my mind as far as differences was the differences in weight between the two uh, with the kel with the polymer lower, well basically a, a complete polymer weapon is much lighter than the uh, AK Draco. Uh, I found that to be an advantage in my opinion. You know, If you're humping it, you're carrying weight is at a premium. This is obviously a much lighter, uh, lightweight version and a choice to use. Well, obviously some of the advantages that Sean had mentioned is the fact of the interchangeability with the parts. You can use a lot of the parts out of this weapon in the uh, AK rifle, whereas with this, it's a completely different animal underneath. There's really nothing you can use from this particular pistol in the AR rifle or vice versa. Uh, is there anything else you can think of? Anything that you um, with some of the advantages that I think of whenever I look at the, uh, the AR platform in particular is, um, you know, if you're looking at, because some people that watch this, you know, uh, realize I'm a zombie nut, so, you know, I always think in terms of zombie attack. Um, so, in a zombie survival, raw, of any court, any, any sort, any type of post-apocalyptic setting, um, you know, the uh, AR-15 has what they call standards to mag-mag. Uh, that's the NATO mags. And then NATO uses 5.56 five, rounds, so if there's some type of a catastrophe and you happen to find a downed soldier, you can replenish your supply of munitions and mags off of any downed soldier. It could be a resupply point, you know, so you can continue to survive. 
Um, and since both of his firearms use that standard NATO round and the standard NATO mag, uh, that's a huge selling point as far as the AR combination. Now, from the AK side, um, obviously I'm not going to have a resupply point. It's something I better have the ammunition for. If I don't, then I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much I'm going to be out of luck. Um, of course, the good thing is you know you have some parts uh, you know interchangeability, which is good. Um, and this is a heavier gun, so this might be able to sustain more damage because it is an AK um, design and it's heavier, more more stamped metal. So if I be around on this thing a little bit more, I might not have I might not you know, might not get as damaged over overall and over time. As, as a polymer firearm might, but oh, of course it also has the punch of an AK, but it also has the, the uh, accuracy of an AK, so it's going to be lower accuracy. So it's just a matter of pick and choosing your battles and pick and choosing what is best for you in your specific situation. Now I would like to point out, you know, one of the disadvantages that I m mentioned as far as this particular pistol being a completely different system as far as an operating system from the rifle also could be somewhat of an advantage. Uh, if you're familiar, you know, of course, with the AK-47, you have a, uh, a piston-driven system versus with the AR, you usually have the direct impingement gas system. Now, with this particular weapon, with the kel it is also a piston-driven. So, it is a little more robust, perhaps a little less uh, intensive as far as care and maintenance, since it is a, you know, a solid piston system. So that would be a plus for it. But I do agree, I'm not as comfortable um, with a polymer weapon. It's, you know, it's plastic. I'm not sure how well it would hold up. I haven't had any problems. I haven't heard of any people having problems, but you really can't beat metal. Um, it is what it is. You have more weight, but it's a little more robust. Granted, with the polymer, you don't have to worry about such things as rust and whatnot. So it's kind of a trade-off. It's... You know, it's its personal preference. It's not which is better, which is not. Each one has its own pluses and minuses. Uh, I would agree as far as, you know, you have knockdown power on the AK versus perhaps a little more accuracy. Uh, I do like the fact that you can carry a little more ammo for the same weight as you could with the uh, AK. So again, you know, there's a lot of things to look at, but it is nice to have a companion setup where you can have a short weapon now granted, you know, you look at these two, and they're both about the same lengthwise. These aren't quote-unquote pistols. You know, this isn't a Glock. So, you know, it's obvious that you are using a rifle round, and these pistols are a little bit bigger than what you would assume a pistol to be. But you still have, obviously, a much smaller package. Yeah, you have, definitely have a smaller package. Um, a lot of people would, would argue that this is more of an SMG than an actual pistol. Um, you know, hence why you can't put a foregrip on these. You can't put any kind of a stock because then it becomes a short barrel rifle. Um, you know, you can, you know, carry these around. And if you're going to fire these, you're probably going to be hanging on to it like this anyway. Because if you're, if you're trying to fire this thing and you're trying to toss this buddy around all cup and saucer style or whatever, I mean, you can't even really ride the slide on this thing. I mean, it's just too honking heavy. It's a little better bit baby, but not not really. I really am going to want to hold on to this thing. And, you know, like he was saying before, we were talking about it. It's like, you really want to bring something like this up to your face to look down the barrel to side it in? You know, I mean, this thing is going to jump. So you're going to want to have it shouldered up. And you're going to want to, you know, be weary of how you're going to be firing these things. Yeah, and they're definitely going to be loud, and there's going to be a lot of muzzle flash, even with a flash suppressor, which this has, and the AK doesn't. But either way, both ways, it's going to be loud, people are going to know where you're at, and they're going to be able to see the muzzle flash. So, again, you know, it's, it's a lot of personal choices. But I uh, hope you enjoyed this, and if you have any questions, of course, you know, subscribe to both of us, and be sure to ask us. This is 2C2. Shot of the Dead, saying don't forget to subscribe. Thanks. A couple seconds to spare.